Okay, good evening, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, my clock just turned six o'clock. So let's go ahead and get started with the West Madison, Madison Place water main replacement in an intersection improvement informational session. Uh, my name is Michelle Bennett. I'm a community engagement specialist with the city of Ann Arbor. And I'm going to get us started on the first few slides before I hand it over to our engineers. Um, a, a couple of things to know. Um, this is a webinar format tonight, so your uh, screens and audio will be disabled. However, we have a, a question and answer feature, which I'll go over in the next slide of how to use, um, which is primarily how we'll be communicating tonight. Um, you can leave and rejoin the meeting at any time. Um, the session is being recorded and will be posted on the project page, which is listed here, and it's listed at the bottom of most of the slides. So this evening, if you have any questions or comments that you'd like to share with us, you can hover over the bottom of your screen, and there's a little Q&A icon there. If you click on it, this window will pop up and you can um, submit questions or comments that will come to myself um, and the uh, engineers that are on the call. We also have a call-in option. So if you have called in on your cell phone, which I don't see any this evening yet, um, but you can press star nine to raise your hand and then we can um, call on you, unmute you, and you can share your question that way. I'm also going to launch um, a survey, um, a, a demographic poll here through, um, through Zoom. It's completely optional. Um, and if you have attended our meetings before, you, you, you may be familiar with this. Um, we've updated some of the questions and uh, we use this information here to track who uh, is attending our meetings. We look at them quarterly to figure out um, through this aggregated um, data, um, what types of people are attending our engagement sessions. I wanna go over our Zoom meeting norms before we uh, get started. Please remember we're here in a public forum um, committed to learning this evening. It's an informational session. Uh, we want to respect the rights of others, and in doing so, we ask that you, if you do have any critiques, that you please make sure they're constructive and they're about ideas and not specific people, and that you uh, are using considerate language so that everyone on the call is comfortable. We have not yet done this, but if there is any inappropriate um, language, you know, your question or comment may not be read and you could be removed from the meeting. I'm gonna go over our uh, agenda for this evening. Shortly, I'll be introducing you to our two engineers here who are going to go over the purpose of this project. Um, we also have some pro proposed designs to share with you this evening. So there'll be conceptual designs, um, an aerial view of you know, three distinct parts of this project. Then we're going to discuss potential construction impacts, when you can expect to see that. And then if we haven't answered all of the questions yet, we'll leave time definitely at the end to go over um, the remaining questions and then discuss the next steps for this project. So I'm gonna introduce you now to um, Brian and Cynthia who are on the call. Um, Brian is trained as an engineer, but he's also the project manager. So if you have any questions about this project from here on out, you can email him or call him directly. Um, and Cynthia is on our call tonight as well as a transportation engineer, and she's here to answer any questions um, specifically about the intersection improvements that we'll be going over. Like I said, this is recorded, so if you don't capture his email address right now, these uh, this will be posted on the project website. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to Brian so that he can uh, go over the project overview. Thank you, Michelle. Um, the, the project that we're talking about started out in our capital improvements plan as a a pretty straightforward project to 
One, replace um, an aging water main on Madison Street. That's from Sewell Boulevard east to Madison Place and then on Madison Place south towards the dead end. And also very importantly um, to eliminate a dead end water main that is on, uh, on Madison Place by connecting it to an existing main that is located in that empty lot at the end of uh, Madison Place. So that was a major component in our capital improvements plan that's really driving this project. At the same time, um, we will be re uh, repaving the streets. Again, Ma Madison all the way from Sewell to Madison Place and then Madison Place down to the end. Um, those will be repaved um, after the water main construction is completed. So that was really the impetus of what was in the capital improvements plan and where, where we, this project uh, started. Beyond that, we had the opportunity in working in the area to make two other um, improvements. And one is at that very large intersection, Madison, Eber White, and then you know Mount Pleasant, Mount Vernon on the south, that five points intersection um, to make some improvements um, at that intersection. And then the other item, um, I'm, I'm certain will come as a relief to a, a lot of people who are on Madison Place and have vehicles turning around in their driveway, is to construct a T turnaround at the south end in that empty lot. The lot was purchased by the city about a year ago, um, specifically for, for the purpose, it was purchased with solid waste funds for the purpose of providing a turnaround for our trash trucks, but for, for any vehicle, for snowplow trucks, for the UPS trucks, uh, for anybody that needs to make a turnaround at the end of Madison Place. So those are the components of the, uh, of, of the project. And I'll kind of dive into, I guess, what uh, each of those are, are entailing. Um, here, here, here's a map of, of the neighborhood. Um, it's hard to see the street names, but at the far left would be uh, Sewell Boulevard. You can see it goes down in, into the uh, Eber White School entrance. So that's where Ma Madison Street starts, West Madison. And from, from the Sewell intersection going east, we will be, again, replacing the water main. It's kind of hard to see on this, but we are going to have the, uh, the slides posted um, on the web page. There's a light there's a darker blue line on there that indicates the, the new water main that will be installed. Um, there's kind of a, a, a spaghetti bowl of water main connections at that Eberwhite uh, intersection. So we'll be connecting to those and straightening those out a little bit and then continuing the water main to the east to that 90 degree turn and then heading south um, to to uh, the end of Madison Place um, at, the, at the T turnaround. Um, ag again, the shaded area, now go back to that one, Michelle. The shaded areas on there indicate where um, the, the pavement would, will be replaced. We, again, we're doing the water main project. The road itself is in, in very bad condition too. So from, uh, you know, the, all, all the asphalt will, will be replaced uh, in, in that project area uh, when we're done. Go, go ahead, and Michelle, now click click to the next one. Um, the Madison and Eberway intersection, if you look on the left side, you'll kind of see that shows the ex existing configuration, it's kind of a very large sea of pavement there. Madison Street is stop controlled. You can actually see the stop bars on that. Um, Eber White, Mount Pleasant, uh, Mount Vernon, not um, no, no stop controls on that. So traffic flows freely north to south on there. Uh, Madison Street has uh, stop signs. Um, the the other thing that you might notice on this is there are five legs, you know, street intersection legs on on that intersection. One of them, Mount Vernon, does not have a pedestrian crosswalk. The other four. Um, in intersection points, streets all have crosswalks. So that is the existing condition that we have. And then on the right side um, shows a proposed reconfiguration there um, to remove the stop controls on Madison Street. 
um, essentially providing kind of a roundabout type of uh, configuration and then constructing the crosswalk um, at Mount Vernon um, for pedestrians. Um, so, so that's kind of the a quick overview of the intersection improvements. And Cynthia, do you want to talk a little bit more about the reasoning behind it and what we're going to be doing um, out there? Yeah, Brian, I'd be happy to. Um, so as, as Brian has, has mentioned, this intersection is a little bit unusual in that it does not really meet current design standards. Um, it's, it has very wide crossings for pedestrians and the control of the intersection itself is a, a little bit unusual. Um, so looking at that, um, there's definitely um, reason for us to consider the intersection as we're coming through and doing a project. In addition to just a uh, desire to bring the intersection up to modern design standards, we also have um, history of interest from the school out here. And we've been out to this location and done a site visit and review um, with the school. And we have a a history of requests from um, the school, both locally and at the district level, that when the opportunity came up to look at improving pedestrian conditions at this intersection and um, really be able to, to make the crossings safer, particularly for the school-aged children. So that's that's the, sort of the background as to how we started looking at this intersection. The intersection configuration does um, lead itself to, you know, it, it's, a, it, it's a good retrofit for a neighborhood roundabout. Um, the, in addition to the pavement markings that you see in, in this drawing, we'll have some vertical elements as well. Um, and we do have, I think it's the next slide, yeah. Some examples, so on, on the right, we have an example of an intersection where we've done a similar treatment as this at. So this is Pittsfield Boulevard. And this is a, a neighborhood roundabout that is on Pittsfield. As you can see, the, the center of that roundabout does have landscaping in it. The, the neighborhood right there, um, they, manage the landscaping and take care of it. And that's, that's why we have landscaping in that particular roundabout. And um, what we do not have at that particular location that we will be installing with, with this intersection are some delineators, these vertical posts that you can see an example from Depot and Fifth, where we have the, the vertical post with the reflective stripes on them that are will del help delineate that the edges of, of where we don't want vehicles to be in the intersection. And you'll see we also have an in-street pedestrian sign at this location. And our intent is to add those to um, where those splitter islands are on the on the um, roundabout that are, are shown with the yellow striping as um, you know just the the reminder to stop and yield for pets. So Cynthia we received our first question uh, about the roundabout so the question is do traffic circles improve pedestrian safety I generally feel less safe when crossing at a traffic circle. The short answer is yes, um, especially when it's a single lane roundabout. So this will be a roundabout, a true roundabout. It will be yield on entry. Um, so unlike some places in town where we have like little intersection traffic circles that are just a, a traffic calming device that do not change the operation of the intersection, they, they will be, um, it'll be a true roundabout. So you yield as you enter the circulating roadway. Um, yes, the pedestrian safety is improved. Uh, it's one of the Federal Highway Administration's proven safety countermeasures. And so it's, it's a good 
device to use in a lot of a lot of applications. It's a good intersection design. The things that are really hallmarks for improving pedestrian safety are that you're slowing motorists down. So drivers have to go slower to travel through the intersection. And when you travel slower, you see more and have more time to respond to changes in conditions. So motorists are more likely to see pedestrians and to respond appropriately to the presence of pedestrians. Also, you really narrow up those crossing distances. So when it's just painted, you're not getting as much of the narrowing, but with the paint and post treatment, then you've really created space where vehicles cannot enter. So they are, you know, more of a protected area for pedestrians in the crossing and narrowing up that crossing. Is Cynthia, would it be correct? I'm looking at the picture of the Pittsfield roundabout so that at um, all of the crosswalks at the Eber White Madison, Mount Vernon, Mount Pleasant intersection, the, the yield sign would be before the crosswalks. So the cars would be yielding to any pedestrians before they get their crosswalks. Yes. Correct? Yeah. Yes. So the crosswalks at the on the Pittsfield example are very close to where you're entering and exiting the circulating roadway. If we, Michelle, if you go back uh, one slide, then um, yeah, you can see that for a couple of them, they're really close to where you're entering and exiting, but there is room to go ahead and, and get those signs in. Um, so we'll have a sign kind of on either side of where you would ent enter the splitter island as a pedestrian. And then also, um, you know, for the, the two southern approaches, Mount Vernon and Mount Pleasant, you have some more distance. So we'll definitely have those signs there to remind motorists that there are they're approaching a crosswalk. Great question, Brian, thanks. I'll turn it back over to Brian. Thank you, Cynthia. I, I, so now we are looking at the very south end of Madison Place. Um, Again, 730 Madison Place was, was purchased uh, about a year ago using city solid waste funds. Um, they certainly saw the need and targeted a few areas in town where they would like to have uh, turnarounds installed for their vehicles. And um, what we would be installing is essentially, we call it a, a T turnaround because if they actually turn it upside down, it looks like a T. Um, so vehicles can enter in, they have to kind of shimmy around and back and forth and then, then can exit. Um, so one big reason we wanted to purchase this property again was for that T turnaround. But the other thing it allows us to do, and it may be difficult to see on this, but there is that blue line kind of up and down um, a north south line. That is new water main that will be it. we'll be installing. And that connects to an existing water main that's running east and west along the south end of that Madison Place uh, uh, lot. So we will be able to connect and loop that water main, which is a huge benefit for uh, reliability uh, for anybody on Madison Place that it's not a long dead end um, main anymore. And then the other feature that we can add is just for the convenience of pedestrians is to be able to connect you know, uh, make a spot for for um, pedestrians to to cross the street there um, at, at a crosswalk, um, if, if they so desire. So, really, not extensive, huge improvements on that lot. You know, it's going to be it'll just remain largely a, you know, somewhat wooded lot. Um, but we'll just have the the T turnaround um, in, installed on there uh, when when we're done. I was just going to pause here for I, I, just a second because we haven't been receiving many questions. So just a reminder, if you all want to submit questions um, about the water main re replacement, the roundabout, or this turnaround, we can answer answer them in real time or wait till the end. I was um, just, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Michelle. I, I just noticed the last bullet point I didn't touch on. 
Mm -hmm. um, the stormwater control, since we are adding um, impervious area um, with that T turnaround, we are also incorporating some stormwater control. It's It might be difficult to see, it's kind of that darker gray shaded area um, uh, on the bottom side, on the bottom of that um, T turnaround uh, where the drainage could go into that. Um, it's, it's, engine, it's an engineered area with a lot of stone um, put in there to, to absorb um, water that might be running off from the, the new T turnaround that we're putting in. So it would not have any direct, uh, would not be built with direct uh, surface water runoff. It, it would be uh, designed for infiltration. Okay, we did receive one question, which is, will, the ad, will this address the excessive water pressure problem on Madison Place? If, if the water pressure is improved, if it's, uh, it improves, the I'll put it this way, it improves the reliability. I can't say for certain how it will increase the water pressure, uh, but you'll have the benefit of water being able to be fed from the um, east-west main that you can see right there, that existing main. So it does potentially increase your reliability and volume of water. It could be a pressure boost also, but I, I would not promise that necessarily. Because I have constructed loop water mains before, it's improved the volume, but the water pressure hasn't improved dramatically. So we, we couldn't say that will certainly happen. Well, we received another question about water pressure, but I think um, from what you've explained, Brian, is that you wouldn't be able to say exactly what we can't, we can't promise by how much it will it will definitely it will improve the flows dramatically um hopefully it, it will not definitely not decrease any water pressures and has a potential for increasing it again a brand new eight inch water main has a pretty large capacity for water um so we would hope to see an improvement but again we can't promise by how many pounds per square inch, it, it might increase. What you may be experiencing if a lot of people are using water is a lot of pressure drop on that dead end main. And that problem would go away again by having the loop to the south and by having a new eight inch water main, the, the pressure drops would be a lot less when there's a lot of use going on. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the next slide. So getting into the actual construction um, on the project, a few things that we would like to uh, point out to everybody. So everybody has kind of an understanding of, of, of what to expect um, as the project proceeds from, from here on um, till it's completed. Um, First of all, um, we've coordinated uh, preliminarily with our forestry department. Forestry will come out and they will need to do some tree trimming. And uh, uh, what I like to say is if they don't trim the trees, the construction equipment a lot of times does. So we need to make sure we get out ahead of that and actually have uh, people with the chainsaws up there trimming the trees properly. Postcards will be delivered. Um, those are probably in process. And if you live along Madison, along Madison Place, directly on the route of the project, you will be getting one of those postcards saying that um, forestry is going to be um, trimming the trees. They will probably be doing that over the course of the next month, month and a half, something like that. It's a good winter activity um, for them to do. Um, other thing that you will be, do you have that postcard, Michelle? Do we have, do we have that? Maybe we can just flip That's over. That's on the next slide if you want to. Yeah, why don't, why don't you just flip to that one real quickly, if you don't mind. Um, so on the left side is that tree trimming postcard. If, if you live along the project route, um, you can expect to, uh, to see that. Thanks, Michelle. Mm -hmm. The other thing we send out is a, um, 
shortly before construction, it's a it's a notice. It's on eight and a half by eleven. It's uh, usually gets delivered by one of our inspectors or one of our interns about a week or so in advance of the construction. It's just a reminder that hey, it's it's coming. Um, we've ha had everything's in order with our contractor. You know, we've got the contract signed. We, we've had the pre-construction meeting. We've got his schedule. He's got the materials. He's ready to start. So we actually send out a notice. Um, and just, a, again, it's just a sheet of folded up paper that, uh, that will be put in your door um, saying, hey, hey, look out for construction, getting ready to start. And Michelle, why don't you click to the next slide? Because I think it was on mm -hmm. that slide. Yeah, it's on the right side. Um, this was an example that we had just used uh, on another project. City of Ann Arbor water main construction on your project is scheduled to begin, and we provide a date. We give some details about, you know, again, what the project is, what we're doing. We talk a little bit about the, the parking, the traffic restrictions, and, and things like that. Tra that trash pickup will not be interrupted. And if you have, more importantly, if you have questions uh, about the work, who to contact and who you can talk to. So it gives you some points of contact again, and it gives kind of a, a thumbnail sketch of what's going to be happening um, as we get into construction. So you'll see that flyer at your door pretty pretty shortly before the work is is about to start. I'd say about a, a week, um, two weeks maximum. About a week is ideal that we send those out. Thanks, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Um. So if you are in the construction zone on West Madison or Madison Place, the streets will be open to local traffic. So you'll you know, still be able to you know, get to your house, get to your driveway, um, but you know, there's construction going on there. The street's not super wide. We'll be limiting parking during the construction. And in fact, posting it for no parking because we need to have room for the trench, the water main trench, and also the materials coming out of that trench and going into the trench. So we're really using up a lot of the room on, on that street. So if you are traveling there and you, if you don't live on Madison and Madison Place, there's absolutely no reason to be driving on those streets uh, during construction. But if you do live there, obviously you have to. So the, um, the contractors, the inspector realize that vehicles need to get in and out but unfortunately, there's going to be delays. Again, if there's a piece of construction equipment in front of you, if there's a dump truck being loaded, you may have to wait for that truck to get loaded and moved out of the way before traffic can get through. So it slows everybody down. Again, we, we apologize for that in advance. It's really unavoidable on our side streets doing the construction. Um, it's unavoidable that we're going to have these, these delays. Uh, again, we try to minimize them as much as possible. We keep an eye out for, for the cars that are trying to move through the area. Um, but it's it's just one of one of the facts of life with construction that there are going to be the delays, you know, along with the, the noise of construction and, and those, you know, the, the the dust and those types of things. Um, construction starts at 7 a.m. That's when the contractor's allowed to fire up and they're allowed to work till 8 p.m. Mondays through Saturdays. Beyond that, if they need to, they would require special permission from the city. Usually on our you know, subdivision street type projects, we're not working um, outside of those normal hours. If, if you have a driveway, again, if you live along there, most likely you do have a driveway. The driveways generally remain open and accessible. That's kind of with an asterisk though. There will be times when the contractor, again, is working right in front of your driveway, right in front of your house. Obviously, at that point, there's going to be a trench. You won't be able to get in and out of your driveway. And there's going to be some curb replacement. It's not extensive on this project. But if the curb gets replaced right in front of your driveway, there will be, you know, maybe five days or so that we won't want you driving on the fresh concrete. Um, so, so that that concrete can set up. Um, if you're going to be locked out of your driveway for an extended period, you will get specific notice about that. Um, the last thing I want to mention, since this is a water main project, there will be planned shutdowns. 
We will need to make some shutdowns when connections are made on the large main switching over into the new main. And then there will be shorter periods of shutdown when your individual water service is reconnected from the old water main to the, to the new water main. When those happen, I was gonna say if, it's not if, it's when those planned shutdowns are going to occur, you will get a flyer or you'll get a hanger, a door hanger. I think it's an orange door hanger. If, I, if I'm remembering my colors correctly, you'll get an orange door hanger on, on your door saying the day that the water is going to be shut down and an estimate of how long it's going to be shut down. So our planned water shutdowns happen with notice, with advance notice, so, so that everybody can, can you know, ac accommodate that, um, not, not have the uh, washing machine running at that time. So the other thing I, I wanna mention is there's also the web page. Again, you can always look, look at that for, for information on the project, project which has my, my contact information right on there. Again, I'm the project manager, I'll be involved I'm involved in design, I'll be involved in the project all the way through through construction. Well, Brian, we have had a few more questions come in. Sure. So let's start with this one because you were just alluding to it. Um, will you establish a listserv or text messaging service with regular updates of status well before the one week notice? Yeah, please, if you go to the webpage, you can sign up for Gov Delivery. It's, it does, it's not called Gov Delivery. I think it's called for um, what, what for for more information on the on the project. Sign up. Um, there's a con, there's a uh, place to click on that on the uh, on our web page. I would encourage you to do that, and that's where we send out the regular updates. There there be weekly updates on, on the project. So. They can be short and informal. Hey, we're about a month away from construction. Hey, we've identified who the contractor is. This is who he is, that type of stuff. Um, so that's a good way to get real quick updates on the project. Okay, we have two more about um, the turnaround and then uh, we'll go back. We have uh, one here about the roundabout as well. Um, okay. but one of the questions about um, the turnaround is, can we get a short nature trail around the T? Um, we won't, um, one reason is to the west, there's really, you go down into the ravine there. And there's really, it's sort of, sort of gonna be difficult to travel. So we're gonna be coming out. Can you go back to that, Michelle, to that? If you're familiar, you might not be familiar with, with, with the lot, but um, the left side of what you're looking at, you know, to the left of the blue, that's kind of a low area that dips down pretty quickly there. It's kind of a ravine, a, a, you know, a, a ditch, a deep swale, something like that. Um, so it's, it's going to be left as kind of a largely just a, a you know, na natural lot. I, I, I know we looked at it with forestry. There's not a lot of high quality uh, trees necessarily on that. It, it almost looks like it had been cleared at some time back in the day and kind of just volunteers have, have grown up over, over there. So not necessarily a high quality woodlands or anything like that, but it'll be left mostly in, in its natural state. Um, I do want to mention some people might be aware there's kind of an old shed garage on that site. I'm not sure what the purpose of that was. Um, we'll, we're going to take it down as part of this project. I think it's just an attractive nuisance. Um, so, so we'll make sure that's gone. So the site's just pretty much going to be left kind of in, in, in its natural state. Okay, there's also another question. I believe it's referring to this parcel. It says, I live very close to the parcel. Does the city plan on selling the two lot parcels so that two homes could be built on the parcel? I don't believe there's any plans uh, to, to sell. Usually it's not, but I I can't say one way or another. I, I don't think it was purchased with the intention of developing it. I'll put it that way. I'm not saying that it's, it's impossible that that would happen though. Um, I don't know that it's buildable to the west, again, to the left of that, because that goes down into a pretty deep swale area. 
Um, to the right might be, you know, more of a standard lot. So it's possible at some time in the future. Again, the city doesn't have necessarily any plans to develop anything on that. We're we're constructing all of the development that we're intending to do with with the uh, water main and with the turnaround. So that's it could be possible in the future, but I, I couldn't say. Okay. Um, so to a follow up on this uh, turnaround is would you expect where do you expect to have construction staging areas? The lot at 730 Madison would seem to be a natural choice, but this would be a bad idea because this is a long, narrow, dead end street. Yeah, the contractors for these typically they're just staging along the street. They um, with the materials. They'll, they'll bring water main pipe out and those gets just will get stacked up someplace usually. But the materials, they don't bring out a lot of materials on these projects to store on site. They are excavating, hauling materials out and then bringing new material in at the same time. So this doesn't involve a lot of stockpiling where you would have a, a large staging area. So we find that our, our right of way um, just the street is is usually adequate on these water main projects. Okay. Well, there aren't any more questions about the turnaround right now, so I'm going to go back to a question about the roundabout, and I'll just uh, go to that slide. Um, can you speak more about how bikes will interact with that intersection and cars in it? Will there be signs that direct how this interaction should work? In this location, you know, you're within a neighborhood, internal to a neighborhood, the typical treatment for cyclists is for them to be cycling in a shared environment with motorized traffic. And that is the intention for this location. So we would continue to have, have that shared environment and cyclists would be, who are in the street would be expected to travel through the roundabout as a vehicle. Uh, cyclists who aren't comfortable with that could decide to travel through the intersection as a pedestrian. Um, that, while it's not part of the question that, that did make me think of something, I wanted to make sure that I pointed out. This roundabout design has been sized for, um, for the school buses because this is, um, you know, Mount Vernon is a route into the into the school building. So, and we know that that is it, the side of the building that the buses typically use. So this roundabout has been sized for, for that instance. As the roundabout is shown here, it does have a concrete top on it. And unless um, the neighborhood decides to pursue um, some sort of a, a agreement to for landscaping, we would pursue doing a um, a concrete top on that. But it it's not a good area for a tree. But um, having you know some like if the neighborhood was interested in having native plantings, having um, you know like good pollinator plants in there. That's something that the city, the city staff would be supportive of, but it would an agreement would need to be entered into um, with our, like our adopt a median program. And that's through nature, natural area preservation folks. Okay, those are all of our questions for now. So we can, um, Keep moving forward. If you have any more questions, please um, go ahead and submit them through the Q&A feature. So let's get back to where we were. And you had just finished the construction slide. These are examples of the notifications that you'll be receiving. And here's the project timeline. I think I need to hit the unmute button. Right now we are in the the midst, I'd, I'd say hopefully near nearing the end of the design process. So 
Uh, we're working to complete the design. Once the design is complete and the project is has gone out to bid, we anticipate it going out to bid in February. Um, we will post that information again on the project page. Um, so, so you can actually, if anybody is, is interested in looking at engineering plans, um, the, the plans will be available um, on, on that site. Um, again, also just to reiterate, in the winter, our forestry crews will be doing the, the tree trimming that needs to be done. Um, and then we'll be um, receiving bids from contractors. Hopefully a lot of contractors will be interested and be bidding on, on the project. Um, that's so that we can proceed into construction in, in the spring. I would anticipate just looking at where we are schedule wise going out to bid in our process um, at the city going through the selection and award of a contract. That'll probably be right around uh, Memorial Day that I'm guessing right now that we would start construction and probably about four solid months of, of construction. Again, it's a, it's a pretty big project. Um, it's it's nothing extremely out of the ordinary, but it's a, it's a good amount of water main that needs to be built, a good amount of paving that needs to be done, and you know a, a lot of detail work there. Um, so I would anticipate construction, you know, June, you know, through the summer, June, July, August, and hopefully wrapping up right around the end end of September. Okay, so now is when we answer any remaining questions. We just had one come in about the um, roundabout again. Um, would the traffic island be appropriate as a rain garden? It. Oh, Brian, you just muted yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um... It, 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 it could accept one challenge that we looked at is it's really um, slanting going heading downhill, so it might not be conducive. I think the designer looked at it and he wasn't able to come up with a good configuration where you know you'd want the rain garden to be kind of flat uh, and, and, and be able to collect the water there. Um, it might not be a great location for that just because of the grades that we're dealing with um, going downhill there. So Brian, I'm going to add to that a little bit. We really started there. We were working with our, our, our stormwater quality people. We were really hoping to be able to, to make that work. But as Brian said, the, the low point is, is really kind of to the north of the, of the. Yeah, it's like everything would just go island. island. Yeah. You know, you'd be trying to build a rain garden on a, a tilted container, so. But you could do, you know, those types of plantings. You know, again, if the um, neighborhood wanted to adopt the median and, and put some type of mm -hmm. rain friendly or drought tolerant type of uh, plantings in there, that would certainly be, be possible. Okay. Um, we do have another question about the roundabout. Um, so is the circle the only option? Is it also possible to add more controls to the existing pattern? For example, stop signs for north and southbound traffic. Yeah, we considered options for this location and the roundabout configuration is the intersection control type and the intersection design type that is going to best address the majority of the concerns that we have received uh, about this intersection over the years. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask a question here about the tree trimming. Does that include clearing the area for the turnaround? No, um, that'll be done by the contractor. Again, coordinating with forestry, they'll just do the trees in the right of way. It'll be up to the contractor that the city hires to do the whole project, to do the, the clearing and, and preparation on, on 730 Madison Place. Okay. We have some um, water main questions coming in. Can a homeowner coattail on the street construction to make a needed home sewer line replacement to the street main sewer line? Um, 
Yeah, yes, again, with an asterisk, we will make sure you know who the contractor is. So we won't, we can't do it through our, our contract, We're, but we can make sure that the contractor knows, you know, who you are and we can put you in touch with them um, to do that work. In fact, we had at least one homeowner, maybe two of them on the project we just did on 8th Street um, doing that exact thing. Okay. Um, roughly, when do you expect the water shutoffs to the homes to occur? Is there an issue if nobody is home when the shutoff happens? No, there's no issue if nobody. If, if, if you're on vacation, that's that's fine. Um, it won't be any issue. Okay. Um, and then, at what end of the project will you start? I suppose they mean what part of the street on Madison Place? Right, that, that comes down to means and methods. It's really up to the contractor to identify what's most efficient for, for them on the project, whether they're starting at, say at Sewell and then working east and south or starting at the end of Madison Place and working out from there. It's, it's really up to the contractor what they see as the most efficient way for them to construct it. Um, that's the last question for now. You can continue to submit questions, but we can go ahead uh, with the next slide. So this is just reminding you if you haven't submitted a question yet and you forget how. Um, I don't think anyone has called in yet, so um, you can just hover over the bottom for the question and answer feature. And we'll move on to the next steps. Yeah, I was, I'm sorry, Michelle, I was just looking up, um, on, I just pulled the web page up on my computer. And if you go to the web, web page, the a2gov.org um, slash West Madison, West Madison, you will see kind of a, looks like a red button and in the upper right hand corner, sign up to receive email updates. Again, I would encourage anybody who wants to, you know, get a, a, an occasional message on what, what where we are with the project to sign up for that. Um, so that's the best way to, to keep up to date with any information that you have um, on, on, the con, on the project. Uh, there's my, my contact information. It's also on the uh, webpage, peacelazuski at a2gov.org or feel free to uh, to give me a call. Um, I've already talked to some of the residents out there. We've had good productive uh, conversations. So again, feel free to give me a call, send me a message um, if you think of something after this meeting. Okay, so that's all the information that we have tonight in our presentation. Um, so we are, are now just going to continue to take questions. Um, we did have one more come in, Brian, um, and this might go to you, Cynthia. This is about the roundabout. It says some children cross the, round the roundabout area to get to the school. Are roundabouts easy for children to understand? And what is their safety record for children? And this person does say, you know, I recognize the current system is also problematic. The, some of the features that make roundabouts um, good for adult pedestrians it make them even better for younger pedestrians the single biggest safety measure about an intersection like this is that it really requires everyone to to travel through the intersection very slowly and it's bringing that speed down that really increases safety and um, when a driver is traveling slower they see more, they're better able to react to circumstances. Things that um, also will make this intersection better for school children crossing is that um, we are reducing the width of the pedestrian crossing by building out those bump outs. Now we do have currently paint and post bump outs proposed, and that's, that's what the project has budget for, but those those paint and post uh, bump outs will reduce the effective width of the crossing. So that's the area where the pedestrian is exposed to vehicular traffic. And it also allows 
uh, the pedestrian to focus on one direction of vehicle traffic at a time as they're crossing. So it reduces the cognitive burden a little bit. Thanks, Cynthia. Um, we have a question about the slide. So this session is being recorded and it will be posted um, on, on the project page, again, this website right here um, in a few days from now. So we're not posting this slide separately, but we were posting this recording so that you have access to the slides and the answers to all of the questions. Okay, so here's another um, roundabout question, I believe. Would the post bump outs in the circle be installed year round or would they be removed in the winter? Yes, those will remain year round, just like the posts that are in at Depot and Fifth. And they will be um, they will be set up so that you know when plowing occurs, plowing can can the snow can get pushed into those areas uh, and then it won't interfere with plowing. And then also that you know the, the city does when we have islands, we, we do um, snow removal for the pedestrian facilities when we have the islands. So those will be, they'll stay in place. Okay. Well, that's all of the questions that we have for now. Um, if you have any more questions, Okay, we just got another one in. Will you require vegetation near the roundabout to be cut back to improve visibility for both vehicles and pedestrians? Uh, great question. The you know vegetation that's in the public right of way that is is near near the crossings. Uh, sort of the normal rules that apply would apply. If there's um, a concern about vegetation, you can feel free to, to reach out to the city. Um, you know, using a 2 fix it is a great way to do that because you can take a picture and send it to us and we understand exactly what your concern is and we can go out and take a look at it. I would say that, um, so yes, as far as adjacent to those pedestrian crossings, we do want the pedestrian crossings to be visible. Um, I do want to clarify that if the neighborhood pursues vegetation in the, um, in the circular, in the circular island, in the central island, that vegetation could be taller. Um, when it comes to a roundabout, you're less concerned about seeing across the intersection for drivers than you are for clear visibility to the left because you're looking for traffic that's already in the central island. So you want to make sure that you're yielding to or already in the central um, circulating roadway. So you're yielding to the people who are already in the roundabout itself. So if the neighborhood wanted to pursue vegetation and you were interested in pursuing some native grasses and you know good pollinator plants that are going to have some height those types of plants like in the lawn extension that's not a good place for those plants because they can impact visibility but in that central island that would be an okay place for those plants Okay. Any other questions? Looks like we might end a little early this evening, but um, you have all of Brian's contact information. If any questions or concerns come up, um, please reach out to him. And again, check back to the website in um, a few days if you want to rewatch this recording to hear any of the answers to the questions here as well. Um, thank you all so much for attending. Brian or Cynthia, do you have any final words? No. Uh, Michelle, you're also going to post a PDF of the slides? We can. Um, I think we were planning to just post the Oh, we don't? Right? Yeah. Okay, because that removes out of context. Right. Thank yeah. you. Thank sure. you for reminding me. Mm -hmm. Okay, well then thank you everyone. Have a great rest of your evening.
and uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you. Thank you.